What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. How are we all doing today? So today's daily verse, or verses, is Malachi 3, 7 to 12, and I'm reading from the KJV, otherwise known as the King James Version. Feeling pretty old school lately, I'm loving this at the moment. And it reads, Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you are out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. So what is it saying? What's the text saying to you? Just take a second to analyze that and go to Malachi 3 7 to 12 in the KJV if you didn't get all of that so what, what, it, what it's saying is it's saying even from the days of your fathers you have gone astray from mine ordinances meaning that people who haven't kept the ordinances of God that they have run away they've run away and gone astray from his teachings from his word and decided to go their own paths so as we know what happens when we go our own paths in life and don't follow God's word don't follow his instructions for our lives we find disaster, we find destruction, and we find negativity, and then we reap and sow negativity upon ourselves. But when we follow God's ordinances, when we follow his ways, when we follow his decrees, and when we follow his way of doing things, we find blessings, we find abundance, and we find a more positive life. So we have to reside within his teaching to receive his blessing. We have to reside within his will to see his abundance. And, and that means doing what he tells us to do. It doesn't mean going our own way, going here, going there. It means doing exactly what he told us to do and acting on it. It doesn't mean doing it a halfway job. There's no halfway jobs in the kingdom. There's only, you're either fully sold out for God or you're, or you're not, you're, going, you're burning. You're either gonna burn or you're going to heaven, but there's no in between, okay? So even from the days of your father, ye are gone from mine audiences and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So, when it says, return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts, it means that God won't leave or abandon us, but we can abandon him. So when we choose not to follow his ways, he's still there, he's still waiting for us to come back to him because he's a loving father, and just like the prodigal son who spent his inheritance and then came back and the father welcomed him back in open arms, that's exactly what God would do for us. But we can run away from him, we can choose to leave him. And when we choose to go on with our own way and follow the desires of our sinful nature, the desires of our heart, we're basically telling him that we're abandoning him. So when he's saying here, return unto me and I'll return unto you, it means he's waiting. So we need to return unto him and then he will return back onto us. And that's an important thing to remember. Like Whenever you feel like God has left you or abandoned you in any situation, the truth of the matter is you've left or abandoned him in that situation in your life. And as believers, we need to dissect our lives to gain, a, to gain a higher level of spiritual understanding to see where we're not following God's word, where we're abandoning him in a certain area of our lives. Because wherever we're not receiving a blessed life, wherever we're not receiving peace in an area of our life, it normally means we're not giving God full control. And the important part of faith is we have to let go and we have to give full control to God. And that means following his ordinances for our life. But he said... Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet have you have robbed me, sorry, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? So when it says basically God is saying, like, you have robbed me, you have robbed me of, of my tithes and offerings. So as believers, we're told to give from our resources, we're told to give from our time, and we're told to give from our talents. So what are you giving to God? Are you giving God are you giving God your your finances, your time, your challenge, sorry, your your time, your talents, 
Like, what, what are you giving to God? So, each of us, all of us, we have some variety of the free, but we're able to give to the Lord. I'm not saying if you're, if you're broke, you're poor, you can barely afford to eat, to go give, like, your, all your 10% or more of your income to the house of the Lord, and then go without food. No. What I'm saying is you need to use, think about all the blessings you've already got, and use them to serve the Lord. See, for me, I, I use, for instance, the main, the main thing I do is I try and give time. So I give time, an important thing. So remember that time is money and then when we give 10% of our day or we aim to give the most of our day or like a, a large chunk of our day to the things of God, this is why I'm doing this ministry, this is why I do Bible study, this is why I listen to the audio Bible, I meditate, these kind of things because I'm trying to tithe 10% of my day to God to give Him glory, to give Him thanks. And, that, and that when we give 10% to God, or, or whatever it may be, our time, our money, our, our, or even, even using our talents to serve His house, like we receive blessing for that because we were showing him thanks. We're showing him, look, thank you for what I've been given and I wish to serve your kingdom with the stuff you've given me. And when he sees that, that means we've stewarded the little blessing we've had and now, and now we, become, we, we become qualified to receive more of a blessing. We become qualified to receive more of abundance because imagine now, wherever you are, if God just suddenly rained down blessings, rained down abundance of prosperity, of money, of talents, of time, all these kind of things on you, and you're not ready for it, then you're going to end up falling away, going the path of evil just as the world goes. You're going to start spending money just as the world spends money, using it to flash wealth, uh, cosmetic surgery, you know, all these clothes, everything, you know, all these kind of things. And that isn't the way of God. God blesses us with finances. He blesses us with talents. So we may use these finances and talents to glorify his name. So we may use them to help others, to love our neighbour as ourselves. Anyway, so don't rob God. Don't rob God of these things, you know. Give back to the Lord. God has given us so much, even coming down to earth, in the form of Christ and sacrificing his life. It's time we give back to him. Do not rob him. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So, like, what, 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 when we rob God, we become cursed. Why? Because we block ourselves from receiving the blessings and abundance he has for us because we're showing ourselves as unfaithful stewards. We have to be faithful stewards of finances and resources to receive his blessing. And faithful stewards of time to receive his abundance. Think about it. When it says, bring ye all the tires into the storehouse, that there may be me in mine house and prove me now where herewith, save the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing that there shall not be enough room to receive it, see? And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, I'll read it again, if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be a room enough to receive it. So God is saying, test me. See, see what I won't do it. See what I will do. Bring me, bring me your, your tithes to the storehouse. Bring me your time. Bring me your talents. Bring me your resources to the storehouse and see what and see and watch how I bless your life. That's what he's saying. He's giving you a promise. He's going to bless your life if you bring these things to, to him. He's going to pour out his blessing over you like an anointing oil. He's going to, he's going to, you're going to smell the sweet fragrance of peace and success if you come to him and sacrifice for him. It's, test him. That's what he's saying. He's telling you to test him. Test him and he will, prove, he will prove to you what he can do for your life if you trust him. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall... Not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. See, like what, when we don't follow the Lord's way for our life, we open ourselves to the enemy. So basically, when we close the door on God, even without us realising it, we're opening the door on the devil and his cronies, his demons, to come in and mess with us. So he's saying here, like, if we trust in him, he's, not only does his blessing fall over us, but his protection falls over us. And then angels are around us in the unseen, fighting off negative forces. But when we reside in the Lord's blessing and protection, he rebukes the devil. The devil flees, because where there is light, there cannot be darkness. Remember, I always say this, you turn on the light in a dark room, the darkness flees. Where there is light, there cannot be darkness. And the devil flees from darkness, or sorry, flees from the light, sorry. So he can reside in the darkness. The devil can't reside in the light, for the light is the opposite of the dark, yeah? So, the devil can't destroy the fruits of your ground and he can't cast the vine's fruit before the time in the field so the vine perishes. It means you will receive your blessing, your abundance, 
your positive life at the right time. It won't be taken away. It won't be destroyed because God's protection will reside over you. Why? Because you trusted God. You brought him your, your, your tithes, your resources, your time and your talents and decided to serve him with them. So he will bless you and protect you and strengthen your life. <clears throat> and all the nations shall call you blessed for you. For ye shall be delight, a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And then people will see that you're blessed and glorify God through you. Because they will know it's only God that can do that through your life. It's only God that can make that change in he or she who has trusted in him, who has followed his ways. So let's trust in God today. And remember, let's not rob God. Let's bring God what he deserves. Let's bring him all the glory, all the thanks, and everything that he deserves as we go forth today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Have a great day today. Love you all. Peace.